you guys, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter's basic Sorgonomics. Check me out. Thanks for subscribing, checking it out wherever you found me. So I'm having some great conversations out there this week. Uh, so I wanted to get into, let's talk about passion. Let's talk about motivation. There's a lot of things striking me lately, a lot of conversation. Uh, as you know, I'm a follower of the uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Vayner Nation stuff. Uh, about uh, how to get motivated, how to do all that kind of stuff, how to be awesome in social media, how to do your personal brand, all that kind of stuff that may be BS. Who knows? But it's kind of the cheerleader for everything going on. And then, of course, be somebody is something that... Actually, we were supposed to talk to you tonight, but we had to reschedule because they're too busy being awesome, actually. Uh, so as we record this on Tuesday night after or uh, maybe Wednesday morning uh, after the podcast... Uh, but there was a, a blog post that was passed along to me today about the truth about passion. And and it always goes down to a few different things. When we're talking about passion, when we're talking about motivation, we're talking about people doing something really great. Now, I, I don't think that I'm somebody, you know, this conversation of uh, am I successful in what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I do it. People are listening. There's a level of success in what I do. I'm not uh, rich on the side of a mountain or anything like that, uh, but uh, it's it's uh, it kind of depends on what your definition is. But uh, either way, I think for the people that you look up to, uh, whether it be you know we always look up the movie stars, we look up the two the musicians, maybe the pro wrestlers if you're into stuff like I am, uh, about uh, you know. Oh, it must have been so easy for them. Oh, they must have been this. Uh, we talked about, you know, get painting in uh, one of my newsletters a little bit ago. And you need to put the time in, right? I think there's also a level of you need to put the fail in, too. Um, in this post over at BeSomebody.co from back in February, it's talking about some lines in here about, you know, passion is not one-dimensional. One, one passion is a discipline. Passion is focus. Passion is painful. You may notice if you go to MikeSorg.com, I got a little uh, saying over there. And I've often, like, battled with if I should keep this. But it's the only thing that made sense when I'm looking for a phrase to define me and what I do. Um, it says, painfully addicted to creating content. That is born from the idea that here I am. Hell, here I am at 12 o'clock at night, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Uh, doing now the the fifth podcast at a point this would have been the seventh podcast of the night depending on on uh, what month you you hit me up on and um, I am tired I'm exhausted I had a full day of, of of doing client work and other work and 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 uh, bouncing around town for stuff and and trying to schedule out my week and, and mentally preparing for chachi plays this weekend but I'm still here because this is what I do period. This is what I do. This is what I know how to do. I don't have any other way to do this. I'm looking at other people, you know, how impassioned they are to do things. Um, I talked about yesterday some people in, uh, that were uh, in a very good vibe promoting their uh, independent uh, something or other company, uh, and they're still talking. As I was podcasting, I'm watching the conversation, and they're still working things out and planning for that next show. They don't know how to stop at this point. I don't know how to stop at this point. And it's been considered. Always is. There's always doubt. Especially when you're in a creative field. The difference is... And this comment actually came up about pro wrestlers at a certain point, too. I don't know if this is something I heard on WWE Network. I don't know if this is something I heard with other indie wrestlers. I don't know what, what the case is. Actually, this might have been J-Rock a few weeks ago. But... The difference between the people that made it and the people that didn't make it is are, is the people that didn't make it stopped at some point and didn't continue. I'm not going to say you meet with a certain level of resistance, and I'm talking about that, that time where you're, uh, you're a dancer and you're not getting enough gigs and you're in a, in a small apartment and barely making your bills and pay, making it past that or maybe you haven't competed hard enough uh and, and and you got passed on on a part or maybe uh you're still working and still working and and nobody's listening to you quite yet 
you worked past that until somebody did listen, until somebody did give you that part, um, until you became a better pro wrestler, a better musician. And, um, and, and yes, there's opportunities, and some people get a fast track to that through, you can say luck, you can say, say through other, other means maybe they didn't consider. You know, maybe they this person happened to be a better networker on top of being a great musician, painter, etc., social media person, um, um, marketer, whatever the case may be. You never know. But how far are you going to push through it? Do you take no for an answer when it comes to that? When somebody says, you're not going to be that thing. How many stories have you listened to of your heroes when... They said, I'm going to be a pro wrestler. I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be a musician. And they said, well, you should think of another, you should think of a plan B. And again, from this article here from the Be Something guys, um, you know, we're taught to have that plan B and have that safe corporate job, right? And I think it's a very special thing when you've determined, no, that's not for me. And no, that's not acceptable. Not to say it's not going to be effing hard. But again, it's going to be hard for you. It's going to be hard to pick you up. It's not going to be hard because your boss makes it hard to get his work done. I think that makes a difference. And what is the breaking point for you? How, how... There's a certain, there's a certain thing that comes up every once in a while... Um, when people are talking about marketing and say, saying, you know, marketing yourself and whatever it is you're doing, if you're trying to do a Patreon thing, if you're trying to do something online and say, hey, well, you'll, you, you should be marketing in this way and pushing yourself in this way and doing your personal brand in this way. Your stuff might suck. Maybe you're just not that good. And some people, maybe they'll never get it. But I believe there is a certain point where if you're focused on a thing, I'm never going to be good at financials. I'm never going to be good at, at at, at my accounting or anything like that because I really don't want to be. I want to do this over here. And that's the thing I want to keep pushing at. And that's the thing that maybe I do suck at it now. Maybe I did suck at it 10 years ago. Maybe I did suck and I got rejected by my peers. But that's the motivation to keep doing it and getting better. So at that point, and of course, there's the concept of, well, you take those little bits that you're not good at and, and kind of outsource those and make sure, well, okay, and we'll, we'll get somebody to take care of that part because hopefully you're good enough at that one thing and built that up. And you do have to be smart about things. But so boiling it down. And some people haven't figured out what their passion is. What is the one from the Everybody Wears Sunscreen? The most important, the most interesting people I know haven't figured out what they want to do at 35. If I got that right, I would be amazed if I got that line right from that. I listened to that uh, in recent months and it really kind of, uh, it, it, it's one of those songs where you're like, yeah, that's going to make more sense uh, 15 years from now than when I first heard it. And, and it absolutely, absolutely does. If you were in your mid-30s and remember hearing that uh, in your teens or whenever the hell you listen to that song. Uh, God, the everybody's free to wear sunscreen uh, definitely is appropriate for that. Let me know what you think. Are you following your passions? Have you figured out what the hell your passion is? I know some people haven't and are not entirely sure what they want to do when they grow up, as I hear often. Um, and just some stuff to chew on. Are you strong enough to push through that and not take no for an answer? from Not just from people telling you no, from life telling you no something to think about let me know if you have anything to respond to that i want to link these uh posts that i have uh considered here including my my about me with that phrase and whatever you might be some good i think i'll even find that v music video for that song that i probably horribly paraphrased here and you can check me against it hopefully it helps you out basic sorgonomics check out everything a lot of stuff going on sorgatronmedia.com if you like this talk I definitely recommend fishingwithoutbait.com or over on sorgatron.com, the LB and the Sorg morning afternoon power hour. It's probably going to be relatable. See you guys next time. Later, Dan Hoopin. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.